Hi, welcome to my first calculus lecture. It's a good question here where to begin. My answer will be to talk about the universe that we will make calculus inside and our universe will be the set of real numbers. This is our symbol R for the set of real numbers and our calculus will be made in this set. If you remember high school, when you wanted to find the roots of an equation like this, x squared plus x plus one equals zero, you say it has no real roots. That means you have roots, but your roots are not real numbers. Actually, there are exactly two roots of this equation but the roots are complex numbers we don't deal with complex numbers in our calculus works okay then let's define our set and this definition will not be very elegant definition because r is the set of numbers that are rational and irrational If we suppose you know about the rational numbers, you write such a symbol Q and it is a subset of the set of real numbers. And let me write the set of rational numbers here as Q. It is defined as all numbers of the form A over B such that A and B are integers and obviously b is non-zero the denominator must be non-zero in math as you know here i said a and b are integers so i must also write here z the set of integers and here q is the set of rationals Z is a subset of Q and Q is a subset of R. That means every integer is a rational number and so a real number. And we can show it very easily like this. Z equals, or Z can be written as Z over 1. And it is a rational number form. We say here rational numbers integers and also i mentioned irrational numbers in the definition of r but what is an irrational number square root of 2 cannot be written as a over b where a and b are integers obviously b must be non-zero so it's not a rational number. However, it is still a number because a solution of the equation x squared equals 2 is square root of 2. Therefore, an irrational number is a number that is not rational. I know it is not a good definition, but we don't have a better one in math. Pi is another example. Pi is irrational too. And you know, pi is 3.14 and so on it goes. There is no pattern after 4. It takes values as it wishes. So it cannot be written in the form A over B either. Of course, there are many of them. There are many irrational numbers. And even in the interval 0, 1, there are infinitely many real numbers. So infinitely many irrational numbers and rational numbers. I mentioned the word infinity. So let's talk about it more. This is the infinity. Here it's symbol. The infinity is a mathematical object beyond real numbers. So 
the infinity is not a real number. Otherwise, if we say it is a real number, then we must get infinity plus 1 is bigger than infinity. Obviously, this is not possible. You see the real line below. We may locate the plus infinity in this side and minus infinity in the other side. And obviously, plus infinity is greater than any real number and minus infinity is smaller than any real number. They are beyond real numbers. They are not real numbers. Here is a remark. There are interactions between the infinity and the real numbers. This is inevitable. And therefore, I will mention about some of the operations uh, with infinity and real numbers. And uh, the following operations are axioms. That is, we suppose they are true without proving them. Okay, the first one. Infinity plus infinity must be obviously infinity. Because logically, infinity plus infinity must be greater than infinity. If it was a real number, that should be. But since nothing is bigger than infinity, we must suppose infinity plus infinity is equivalent to infinity. The second one, minus 1 multiplied by infinity, the minus sign changes the side of the infinity as in real numbers. Therefore, the best thing to define minus 1 multiplied by infinity is minus infinity. And the third one, minus infinity minus infinity, this must be minus infinity, as in infinity plus infinity case minus infinity minus infinity is beyond minus infinity but that's not possible therefore we must say minus infinity minus infinity is equivalent to minus infinity and the tricky one minus infinity plus infinity if i write it in this form infinity minus infinity this one is troublesome i will talk about it later but I can immediately say that infinity minus infinity is different than zero. It's not zero. Okay, what about if we have a real number a greater than zero? a plus infinity, obviously this must be infinity because otherwise a plus infinity is bigger than infinity. Similarly, a times infinity must be infinity because here a is greater than zero. The same reason a times infinity cannot be bigger than infinity. And for the next two, minus a plus infinity must be infinity because nothing can make the infinity smaller. And therefore, I must write here minus a plus infinity is equivalent to infinity. Nothing can make the infinity smaller. And the last one, minus a multiplied by infinity. Let me play with this. If I write it as minus a multiplied by infinity, then I know a multiplied by infinity is infinity, and therefore, by using this, I can say this is equivalent to minus infinity. Of course, there are other interactions of the infinity and real numbers. We will see them when necessary. Now it is time to talk about an infamous trouble in math, it is 1 over 0. 
Some say it is infinity, but they are wrong. One over zero is not infinity, and it is not minus infinity. Let me put some numbers on the line below. Here are my numbers in the middle. Let me put zero. Then I will put here one over zero point one. Then one over zero point zero zero one. And here the last one one over zero point five zeros and one. And so this one is ten. This one is a thousand and this one is a million. You see, my numbers are going to plus infinity as they approach to 1 over 0. Look at the approximation. This is 1 over 0 0.1, but 1 over 0 0.001 is more closer to 1 over 0. And here, 1 over 5 zeros and 1 is more closer to 1 over 0, and so on. So, my numbers are getting closer to zero, but their values are getting bigger and bigger. And also, I can do this in the negative side. If I put here 1 over minus 0 0.1 and 1 over minus 0 0.001 and 1 over minus 0 0.5 zeros and 1. And this time, we have here, this is minus 10, this is minus 1,000, this is minus 1 million. So it is going to minus infinity from this side. But also, it is getting closer to 1 over 0 from this side. And this one is 1 over minus 0 0.1. The other is 1 over minus 0 0.001. Here you see getting getting more close, closer to 0 from the left-hand side. And also here we can write getting more closer to 0. So as a result, in each side, our numbers are going to 1 over 0, from here going to 1 over 0, and from here going to 1 over 0. But their values are going to plus infinity and minus infinity. Now, what can we say about this process? Note that with this process, it is impossible to reach 1 over 0 from either sides. That's why 1 over 0 cannot be a number, because your approximation to 0 does not end anywhere. It becomes getting smaller and smaller. And therefore, we cannot reach to 1 over 0. And since we cannot reach it, we cannot say there is a final real number which is equivalent to 1 over 0. Also, we cannot say 1 over 0 is plus infinity because from the other side, 1 over 0 is minus infinity. Since plus infinity and minus infinity are two different things, we cannot say 1 over 0 is plus infinity or we cannot say 1 over 0 is minus infinity. Let me write it here from the right hand side. The numbers are closing to 1 over 0 and to plus infinity. Our numbers are closing to 1 over 0 and to plus infinity. And from the left hand side, our numbers are closing to again 1 over 0 and to minus infinity. But if one, 1 over 0 is plus infinity, then why not it is minus infinity? And similarly, if it is minus infinity, then why not it is 
plus infinity. Therefore, we cannot say that 1 over 0 is plus infinity or minus infinity. These are two different notions of math. And then we can say about 1 over 0 only one thing. It is undefined. Have a nice day.